Hello, my name is Corey Cohen, and some of you may know me from the Apple world, but I actually collect other types of computers. Today I'm going to talk to you and show you the Sol 20 personal computer from Processor Technology and a very rare and functional Helios 2 disk subsystem made by Processor Technology that worked with the Sol 20. This is an 8 inch floppy system, and as we go through it, I'll explain why it's so rare to have one that's actually functional in today's day and age. The first step for us is to turn on the Helio system using a key. This was built to be a professional system for businesses. The Helio unit actually weighs 70 pounds and is made of very hefty metal. We then need to turn on our Sol 20 system. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put a disk in, in this case PT-DOS 1.5, our operating system. We'll put it in drive zero. We will go over to our Sol 20 system and at the prompt type boot to load the operating system. I can list the files very simply. I can even simply run a program like Targ or Target. Target was one of the first programs shown on television back in 1976 on the Tomorrow Show mesmerizing host Tom Schneider. Now while we're here, let's talk a little bit about PT-DOS. PT-DOS is very similar in design to a modern Unix. All file I.O., all system I.O. are done through file handles. So if I wanted to write to the serial port, I can simply copy a file to a specific file object and the information will be sent to the serial port. One of the other very nice features of PT-DOS is the fact that it has built-in help. This was pretty rare for operating systems back in 1976-1977 so if you get the name of a command, you can simply look it up. For example, I'm always forgetting the fact that free has a question mark after it. The Helio system also supports running other operating systems than just PT-DOS. CPM 1.4 was available from Lifeboat. I actually have one of the only working copies of CPM 1.4 for the Helio system and have archived and shared this with other Helio system owners. There aren't very many of us with working systems. One of the things that you'll notice is there is only 46k for this CPM version. That is because internally the Helio system and the Sol 20 reserve some of the upper memory and this is what limits us for our CPM system. So I can run a little utility that lets me install some CPM 2.2 extensions, and I can even run Zork on this system. So while we're here loading Zork, let's talk a little bit about what plugs into the Sol 20 from the Helio system. Well, the Helio system has two cards that are in the Sol 20 system, two S100 cards. There is a formatter card as well as a controller card. This combined with a special personality module for the Sol 20 will provide the ability to boot the Helio system. So while we load up another program for the Helio system, the actual sales demo used in 1977 by Processor Technology to show off the Helio system, let's talk a little bit about why there are so few working systems. The Helios 2 disk subsystem used a Percy 277 drive, very much like some of the Chromenco systems. However, understand some things about this drive. The drive used a lot of hard drive technologies for a floppy drive. It had a voice coil system. It used a mirror with graduating lines on it to position the head. If the head was not tied down or secured during shipping, basically your drive was destroyed. If the mirror cracked, game over. And even today, just through age, the mirrors fall off these drives, and they must be positioned perfectly 
and re-glued on where the drive is basically unusable. Also, many of the capacitors, the tantalum capacitors in the system, were actually spec just a little bit too close to uh, where they needed to be so that they tend to fail. And they fail spectacularly. And they're not easy to replace based on how the drive has to be essentially disassembled to change them out. And then you've got to go through some very complex procedures in order to recalibrate the drive. The Helio system also has an electrical eject system. The gears for this system are nylon, and almost every single one by now have cracked, and you can no longer eject the discs out of the drive. Yes, someone has actually gone out and produced a couple of gears, and those gears can be used to fix this, but there are a handful of those gears left. So we know there are a handful of working drives. Now the new gears were produced in a much better material and should never have this problem again, but only a handful of them. So any Helio system that has not had the gears replaced is living on borrowed time. One final thing that should be mentioned about the Helio systems. They are extremely heavy and many of them are dented because someone has dropped them because of just how large and heavy they are. So that also affects the problem with the mirrors. Now one other thing that should be mentioned about the Percy 277 drive is while it is a dual disk drive, it actually is not technically a dual drive. It shares a lot of components between the two drives. And this is why you'll hear when you use the drive, for example when you're copying disks, a lot of clattering as things are repositioned between drive 0 and drive 1. It's a very interesting system. Now some of you may say you've got a Helio system, but it doesn't have the electric eject, and it really is two separate drives. Many of the discarded or broken Helio system, Percy drives, were just simply removed, and the large case was used to house Seagate and other drives, though they are not compatible with running Helio software. One of the things that I get asked often about this particular Sol 20 system is, wow, it's so clean. Is it new? Is it real? Um, well, this is a restored system. While I do have some unrestored Sol 20s that look pretty good, uh, this particular system has actually been fully restored. That restoration included not only bringing everything down to bare metal to remove all the crazy little things, dings, dents, and rust that were actually on the system, and then it was completely refinished, repainted with the complete factory style splatter coat, but the system was also rebuilt, specifically the Helios 2 drive system, from the ground up. The bearings have been repacked, all the gears were changed out, the sensors were recalibrated, all the capacitors were changed out. It is essentially a new drive, and hopefully we will be able to enjoy seeing the Helios 2 system operate for years to come.